Hello. Today I'd like to show you how to do some curved piecing. Now it's going to be free motion type piecing, um, sorry, free curves. So it's not a set specific pattern shape and I've made a sample here so that you can see I've inserted um, into, I used the dark grey as my main background colour and I've inserted these wonky stripes into that grey. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. Now you may not want to do three colours, you might only want to do one, you might only want to do half a one. But I will show you how to put some strips in between that are, are sort of curved, randomly curved as we go. So to do that, I've got some pieces of fabric sitting here. I've got my colours and I've got just a piece of the main background which we're going to cut into. So if you were trying to make something that was perhaps a border with an inset stripe or something, you would need to have the full length of what you're wanting to do. Today I'm just working with a sample that's approximately uh, 13 inches long, I think. And I think I've probably cut it about nine inches wide. So I'm going to show you um, first off with the red fabric how to put a piece of that in. So I'll just move these other bits out of the way. And I'm going to just use my board to help me see where I'm going. It's not really going to do anything because we're not using rulers for this cutting. I'm just going to line it up so that it's more or less level with a line on the board. And then I'm going to lay my fabric my background fabric, so I'm wanting the colour to be right side up and I want my main colour to be also right side up, sitting on top but overlapping a bit because what we're trying to do is create this area here where we don't need a colour behind it. Um, but you've got to remember to allow for the curve that's coming across and things. So I'm probably going to go approximately uh, one and a half inches or so beyond because I don't want it to be too small um, up to the edge there. Now, I know that I've lined up with that line there, my red fabric underneath, more or less. Um, so I'm just going to now cut a curve with my rotary cutter, no ruler. And I know that I'm working between on my board because of the, because of the way I've lined it up between my four and three line here and up here. So I'm just going to cut a random curve and, and I'm going to sort of wander along here pretty much within that one inch area. Now if you're not sure where that is, you could just make a little chalk line or something um, to help you as a guideline, but it's not really something that matters too much. So we're cutting through both layers of fabrics and we've just cut ourselves a nice little curve there. Now I'm going to take away that top fabric, top main colour, and you can see that that curve matches. So that's the, the whole idea of this cutting the two together was so that your curve exactly matches and we're going to actually flip this over and now we don't need this other bit here so that's we can just discard that and today I'm going to use pins I'm not really a friend of pins because they usually get me but today with these curves pins are actually a really good idea um, so I, would, I just want to line this up so we flip that over and we're now right sides together and I want to line up these um, high bits of my main colour here and I'm so that it's level and I'm going to pop a pin in there just to hold that and I'm going to do the same at this point here so just shift your fabric around because it's not going to be um, amazingly exact doing this so shift it around so that you can match up some bits and so we've done that little bit now and now we need to match this this valley with this hill up here so I'm going to bring that up and now this is going to pull all the fabrics all over the place now, this is a lot of fun, you can create some amazing things and today I'm just popping some little stripes in but uh, you could do it for all sorts of other things and you could go for some specific shapes if you wanted to. The main thing is to remember to cut both of your fabrics together so that you get that shape exact for piecing in and you're going to lose some of course in the seam. Um, so I've done those high and low bits and it's looking a little bit unwieldy at this stage but I'm going to pop another pin in between as well. So you can just fiddle around till you can get those edges sitting pretty well. Now if you've done dressmaking you'll know about this, it's kind of easing it in. Because we've cut on a bit of an angle, it's got, it, it's, you're able to sort of stretch, it's like being on the bias. There's a little bit of movement in the fabric. So pop a a pin in so that your raw edges are at a level so you, we're wanting the raw edges level because we're just going to sew a quarter inch seam as we would normally with patchwork and I'll just pop another couple of pins in you could put more pins in if you chose to you could put less um, 
but it's a, it's a good idea to have something holding it. And then we just want to bring that beginning end together so that we're ready to sew. So this is looking quite unwieldy at the moment, and but you can see that it is going to actually actually work. So we're going to take it to the sewing machine now, and I'm just going to be using a, a normal quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm going to sew all the way along that line, but you do need to be a little bit careful as you go because it's all a little bit bunched up, you need to make sure that you're feeling that it's all sitting flat as you go. So just take your time, don't, it doesn't need to be rushed. It also doesn't need to be absolutely exact, so don't panic if it just seems to be wandering just a little bit. But in general we're trying to keep those two raw edges level and do a quarter inch seam allowance along there. So just taking your time. We're going to now I'm going around this curve here, so you've got to make sure it's sitting, you can feel whether it's sitting flat underneath there. If you've got a needle down position, that's often a handy little feature on your sewing machine. And just be careful that it doesn't start bunching because you don't want to have little tucks and pleats in it. So it probably looks harder than it is. those raw edges as level as you can together. Keeping the back nice and flat. So quite a bit of uh, feeling going on, just making sure everything is sitting right. And just easing that around those little curves. to the end of that seam and it's probably still looking a little bit ungainly but we're going to press that now so you can see I've stitched all that in that seams all looking pretty good um, if just a bit wobbly um, and now I'm going to press that and you'll just see that that will just sit down really nicely because we've cut all that um, the two layers together that curve will match nicely so I'm actually going to press the seam towards my darker colour and I'm just going to press that and you'll find that that will just ease itself down with that curve. Just keep an eye on pressing that curve around. And there we have a delicious curve. So I'll show you how we do the next bit so that it, you're inserting it as a wobbly stripe like I've done on my sample. So it's the same sort of thing again, lay your fabric down right side up, lay your background, the same piece that we had used to cut away there, that match there. Now you could try and cut that in the exact shape if you wanted it to be a fairly even curve, but uh, you need to remember though that wherever you cut you're going to be coming in quarter of an inch for your seam allowance, so it's going to be less than what you're seeing there um, in the finished item. And I am going to cut it again, but I'm going to cut it with the main colour as well because I don't want it to be an exactly even curve there. We could actually go the other way and have a, a really wibbly wobbly sort of line going along here. Again, cutting through both layers with your rotary cutter and we've now got that line and we this time we're going to take away the red and we find that that curve matches exactly in there and we're going to do exactly the same thing now we're going to pin it like we did before and we're going to lay that red on top and pin these high points first of all and bring this one up so that you can pin it now just keep an eye on on your edges we started off with level ends so we want to maintain that distance because it's just going to bunch up a little bit in there but that's just the nature of it at the moment while we're doing the pinning because it's going in the opposite direction to where it thought it was going to go. 
So we're just going to bring these up and pin these bits in the middle here as best we can. And we pop a couple of extra pins in between because I think it's a little bit fiddly. That's so much fun. This is such an exciting thing to do because you can create all sorts of um, shapes or little inserts that could be really helpful. You could be putting them down a border or you could be making some random shapes in some blocks or all the way down a quilt if you're doing something um, a little bit more graphic. So much fun to be had and you could in be inserting stripes, all sorts of things could be going in at this point. Um, there's almost no limit to what you can do. You just pop the, the pin in the end so that we've got a starting and finishing point. So again we've got this very ungainly looking piece but we're going to go back to the sewing machine and sew that line and then you'll see that this randomly shaped stripe has been inserted. So again, quarter inch seam allowance, take it slowly. If you've got a needle down, that's helpful. Keep an eye that the fabrics are not bunching and pleating underneath. You can do that usually by feeling. You just need to ease this around a little bit. I've been putting it in as a stripe. You could, of course, just be changing on to another colour. You might be making something that just goes from one colour to another, which, of course, is fine. You could be making all sorts of things. You could be doing it in a horizontal type quilt where you're making a landscape, which would be really fun. You could add all different colours in to your landscape. So we've done that, that bit now and again we're going to go back to the iron and we're going to press that and you'll find again I'm going to press into the darker colour so I'm going to hold it this way and just ease that pressing. You see that it's all going the same way and that should just press really nicely so that you've got this irregular shaped insert in your fabric. Now couldn't you do some fun stuff with that? I just think that's great. So if you imagine what I've done here as being that way or maybe you're going to go that way and you could be making something really exciting in the way of a landscape type thing depending of course on the colours you use or you could be having it as just little rows for no good reason. Um, I won't do any more now because I won't hold you up but I'll give you a bit of an idea of another thing you could do. You might want it just in your border and if I just lay this over here so if you imagine that there's no join there that that's just that bluey coloured fabric and that's your border around something or just a stripe so that you've got the main colour of this and another portion of that so you've done the red that we've put in there and then you've just joined it to your next colour, but that's going to be now your main colour. So there's lots of different design options for you to think about. Um, I just thought if I showed you how you lay your fabric on top, you do your cutting. So if I was now going to go and put this colour in, I'd be laying that on top. I'd be allowing myself an area behind that I know I can cut within. And I'd be using my cutter and I'd be cutting that wobbly line to do the next join. So hopefully that's helped you. That should be um, setting those creative juices going um, on curvaceous piecing. Thank you.